you not only get very high resolution, but you also get to know where in the sample the cell is and therefore where in the sample the expression profile that you're seeing is. Hello and welcome to Strand Explains, a podcast where we discuss what's happening in the world of precision medicine. From weird case studies and interesting fact to interviews with leaders in the industry. Almost 200 papers have already been published using spatial transcriptomics platforms. But what is spatial transcriptomics and what makes it such a revolutionary new technique? Hi, this is Akshi Shingal, and today I'm joined by RK to talk about this revolutionary method. Transcriptomics has always existed, and it involves basically sequencing the transcriptome, the, the RNA, which makes protein in, in our body. And typically these techniques are bulk. That is, they take all the RNA in a sample, regardless of which cell it came from. And there have been two advancements in this field. And they both sort of dovetail with each other. The first uh, advancement was just that you can get single cell resolution of RNA. That is, instead of processing all of the RNA in bulk, uh, you look at the RNA in each cell in a particular sample, right? And there's thousands and thousands of cells in each sample. And each cell has its own sort of RNA expression profile and tells us something new about the function of that cell in that sample, right? So that was the first development which is single cell RNA seq. The second one is the one we're talking about today, which is spatial transcriptomics, where you not only get very high resolution, it's not necessarily single cell resolution, but it's much higher resolution than bulk RNA sequencing. You get the high resolution, but you also get to know where in the sample the cell is, and therefore where in the sample the expression profile that you're seeing is, right? So that's the spatial part, right? So for example, imagine if you had a tissue sample and you had a planar slice of it, and you were looking at it under a microscope. This is what pathology does. Uh, you can see all the cells and the gross appearance of the cells. You can annotate the cells. So some of them will be in a cancer tissue, for instance. You'll have stromal cells. You'll have immune cells. You'll have, uh, you know, you, you may have cancer cells if it's a cancer if it's a cancer specimen, right? So you can superimpose now with spatial transcriptomics. You can superimpose the expression profiles of the RNAs of these cells atop the cell identities. So you know not only what kinds of cells there are, but also what kind of expression patterns they are. And this is profoundly useful in a multitude of scenarios. I see. I think there's a nature paper that got released last year, which calls spatial transcriptomics the method of the year. And I really like the analogy they yeah. used in that paper, uh, where they kind of said, uh, using regular, just normal uh, sequencing or transcriptomics, like you mentioned, is like getting a milkshake. You're taking your tissue together, you blend it up, and you get gene expression of the whole, that whole uh, milkshake, so to speak. Single cell expression, however, on the other hand, would be like taking a fruit salad and digging into each fruit piece individually and understanding what that fruit piece constitutes of. Um, spatial transcriptomics, they say in this paper, is like a fruit tart, where you have a tart and each piece itself um, contributes to the structure of the tart and you know exactly where each piece of fruit is and how it contributes to the tart. And I thought that's a really fun um, analogy and it gives you an idea of what spatial awareness means in the sense of spatial transcriptomics. Yeah, uh, that's a cool analogy for the holiday season, right? The dessert analogy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So there's some really interesting work happening right now with spatial transcriptomics. Like I said, on nearly 200 papers have already been published. And so we'll just talk through some of them, give you an idea of some of the work that is that is possible now thanks to spatial transcriptomics. So starting off, one uh, cool paper I came across was talking about creating a tissue atlas for mouse brains. So the idea was to map spatial organization of cells in large tissue samples and organs. So uh, what a group at the Brain Initiative Cell Census Network did or is working on is trying to create a brain atlas of mouse brains so that they know what the cell identity of each and every cell in that brain is. And that just gives us this completely new plethora of information, uh, which is spatially aware when it comes to the brain and how it works. And the 
ramifications and repercussions of that are mind boggling in terms of what we can do with that kind of information and so that's just one um that's that's just one example yeah and you know the other example maybe slightly more general but again relating to i think you know you you want to profile tissue right and there's multiple ways to look at tissue and people will a lot of people will be aware of pathology which is what i spoke about earlier where you just look at stained cells under a microscope but here you're actually profiling the tissue right uh, in situ which really just means that you take the same stained cell uh, sorry stained slide of uh, cells and then you subject it to spatial transcriptomics and so you map the expression of all of the cells and you know exactly where they belong and so that's uh, that's another huge maybe more overarching application that sort of covers a lot of the use cases we're talking about today so um talk going maybe into something more specific there is work being done out of the university of edinburgh into understanding the disease pathology of liver cirrhosis so just to give you a bit of background chronic liver disease can be caused by a variety of issues however in certain cases it has been seen that if you're able to treat the underlying cause because of the properties of the liver and the way the cells work in that they have regenerative properties the cirrhosis can actually be reduced and so now scientists are looking at using spatial transcriptomics as a way of better understanding this and identifying the cells that respond to treatments that could potentially lead to the reversal of that cirrhosis especially because what they're seeing is there certain cells that respond better to that cirrhosis and uh, sorry respond better to drugs they use to treat the cirrhosis uh, despite having the same disease presentation and understanding when you have the same tissue why certain cells are reacting and certain cells are not reacting using something like spatial transcriptomics can give you a lot of information yeah and speaking to the same theme but in cancer cell identities again play a very important role in trying to figure out whether your drug is actually treating the right types of cells or even whether they exist so for example in immunotherapy one of the problems is that some types of cancers are just not responsive to immunotherapy uh, even though some tests for them may indicate that they might be responsive right so the whole uh, question in cancer treatment in precision medicine cancer treatment is to figure out why certain types of cancers don't respond to immunotherapy and you know these newer age uh, assays like spatial transcriptomics may well have the answer to why that could be we've just really scratched the surface in terms of uh, you know the use cases of spatial transcriptomics the sky is really the limit when it comes to this stuff and there's so much more to be explored and we're so excited we at strand at least are so excited about the work that's getting done we've actually created a wiki that you can check out on our website and we'll link it below to learn a little bit more about this technology uh to get some resources you know there's some images out there there's some links to papers there's some podcasts and videos because like we said this is a new and emerging technology it's only been around for 5 or 6 years and there's so much to learn about it and so much more to discover so if you get a chance check it out and let us know what you think yeah we're really excited about this and as sakshi said uh, we also will have some developments hopefully soon that we can share so we we'll look forward to doing that very excited talk about it and i think on that note we can end thanks okay thank you sakshi